Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the VLAN trunking protocol, which is often referred to by the acronym VTP. Now, VTP is a Cisco proprietary protocol, which means it will only work on Cisco equipment, and you may never encounter VTP in a production network. So this is not a required protocol. It's a nice thing to have if it fits your environment, but you're not required to run it. However, whether or not you encounter it or you don't encounter it in a real life example, you're definitely required to know this for the exams. So we're going to cover it here in detail. And like most of the tutorials, we're going to start in this tutorial with all of the theory and the concepts and background knowledge to bring you up to speed. And then we have a dedicated tutorial on all of the configuration and verification commands, how to actually implement it. All right. So Really, VTP is a protocol that enables you to easily manage a whole bunch of VLANs across your switch network. So if I have this switch network here, and I go ahead and create VLAN 2 on this switch, well, I'm going to then have to log into every other switch and make those same configuration changes. There's a lot of room, room here for error. I can make a mistake. I can forget to update one switch. So there's a potential here that my network will not have a consistent configuration. And this is where VTP comes in. VTP will enable us to make a change on one switch and then have that change pushed out to every other switch on the network. This enables me to achieve a consistent configuration across all of my switches. I can add, I can delete, I can even rename VLANs on one switch and then automatically have the work done for me and have all of the other switches updated automatically. Okay, so this is kind of a fun protocol to talk about. We're going to look first at how it actually works, how it achieves this functionality, and then we'll move into something called VTP roles and how your switches behave when they're running VTP protocol. We'll take a look at the different types of messages that are used in VTP. And this is important stuff, especially when you need to troubleshoot problems with VTP. We'll take a brief look at the different versions of VTP. And finally, we'll look at a concept called pruning. All right, so let's get started. So this is how VTP works. And it all comes down to these layer two messages. That's layer two of the OSI model. Now all these switches will exchange VTP messages. So let's use the example I started off with. Let's say I create VLAN 2 on switch A. After I do that, switch A is going to send a VTP message to the switches it's connected to. And then switch B and C will receive that message, update their configurations, and then pass along messages of their own to switches that are that they are connected to. So then switches D, E, and F will also receive that change information and they'll each update their configurations. That means all of my switches will now have the same configuration. They're synchronized and that's what we want in our network. Now in addition to these messages being sent when a change is made, also VTP messages are sent periodically. And we do that because let's say switch F here is added because our network is growing. Well, we don't want this switch to have to wait until a change is made in order for it to learn all of the VLAN configurations. So if a periodic message is sent out, switch F will not have to wait too long before it learns the configuration for the VLANs it needs to support. Now there is some order applied to VTP. All of the switches here if they are running VTP and if they should all have the same configuration, then they are considered a management domain. So the management, management domain just basically defines all of the switches in the same group that should have the same VLAN configuration. And you actually configure the management domain on each switch when you're setting up VTP. And as a side note, and we'll cover this in the other tutorial as well, it's a case sensitive name. And if it's wrong, it'll prevent a member from joining the domain uh, management domain. So you need to be careful there.
Also, you can have multiple domains in your network. So if you have different switches running different configurations, you can have more than one management domain. So you have some flexibility there. Another aspect of how VTP works is uh, it's, it relates to the messages that we're talking about. Each one of these messages, when a change is made, has a revision number. And this revision number, every time a change is made, it increments by one. And so when switch B, for example, receives this message from switch A, it'll look at the revision number of that update. And it'll compare it to any other revision numbers on updates it receives from other switches. And the rule is, the higher the revision number is, um, the more current that information is considered to be, and it'll use it instead over the lower numbered revision. So the higher the revision number, the better the information, and that's the one that is used. VTP messages are only sent over trunks. Okay, so all of these links on our network here would have to be trunks in order for VTP messages to be sent over them. That means if you have an access port configured and re you're relying on that uh, to connect a switch to a network, VTP messages will not be sent over it. Okay, and finally, as an overview, you can assign passwords to your VTP domain. That way, switches have a, a method of authenticating. Uh, you just have to make sure, though, that the password is configured correctly and the same for each member of your management domain. Okay, so that's an overview of how VTP works and some of the aspects we need to focus on. Let's go ahead now and look at the switches and determine how they function because there are certain roles that a switch will take when it participates in VTP. Okay, so these different roles in VTP are actually correctly referred to as modes. So a switch can be in one of three different modes when it's running VTP. The first mode we'll look at is the server mode and usually only just a few switches in your VTP domain will be in server mode. There is a requirement that you have to have at least one and oftentimes there are just maybe two or three at most. Now the server is where all of your changes are made. All of your VLAN configuration changes are made on servers and then the server like we just illustrated will then send out those changes in the VTP messages to all of the other switches. Now, the server mode is the default VTP mode when you configure a switch. So keep that in mind. If you're not looking to configure a switch in server mode, you'll want to change it because if you don't, by default, it will act as a server. And that may cause interruptions to your network if you add it to your network. Okay, so be careful there. Now, all of this VLAN configuration information is saved in a file on the server. And that file is called vlan.dat. That's short for database, VLAN database. So it's just a file in the NVRAM, and that's where all the configuration information is saved. Also worth noting, on the server, only VLANs 1 through 1005 are supported. So there's a bit of a limitation here when you're running VTP. You cannot uh, support every VLAN up to, say, 4095, when you're running in server mode. You're limited to VLAN 1 all the way up to and including 1005. Okay, so that's the first mode. The second mode is the client mode. And you can see here we have four clients configured. And that's because most switches in a VTP domain are going to be clients. Like I said, only one or two are servers. The majority of the other ones are clients. Now the clients are the switches that learn the configurations from the servers. And then when they receive those messages, like we illustrated, they pass them on to other switches in the network. So generally speaking, not a lot happens on the client in terms of making configuration changes. In fact, you're not allowed to make changes on a client, only on the server. Now you can add ports to a VLAN on a, on a client. That should be obvious. If you need to plug in a new laptop, say, to this switch F, you can certainly add a port to a VLAN. But you cannot add a VLAN or delete a VLAN or change the VLAN's name 
on a client mode switch. You have to make those kind of changes on the server. Okay, um, the configuration information on the client is also saved in NVRAM in the VLAN.dat file. And just like servers, VLANs are, uh, clients are limited to supporting VLANs 1 through 1005 only. So if you're going to use VLANs and you're going to use VTP, servers and clients, you have to use VLANs that are numbered between 1 and 1005. It's just a limitation we live with. Okay, so now let's move on to our third and final VTP mode, and that is the transparent mode. Now, this is a unique mode because it's completely different than the server and the client. In fact, transparent mode does not participate in VTP. So configuring a switch in VTP transparent mode is the same as turning VTP off. But because there's no turn off VTP configuration command, you have to put it into transparent mode. Okay, so if you don't want it to participate, make it a VTP transparent mode switch. And what happens here is when a transparent mode switch receives a message from a server that is participating in VTP, it simply ignores that message. It'll be a nice a nice friendly switch and it'll relay those messages to other clients in the network but the transparent switch will not actually listen to those messages and change its configuration likewise a transparent switch will never generate VTP messages that means a transparent switch is it's autonomous it's like an island unto itself and it's it's not really playing nice with everyone else in terms of syncing its configuration that means you can make changes on a transparent switch you can create VLANs delete VLANs and rename them because the configuration on a transparent switch is relevant only to itself it's only locally significant now a transparent mode switch does not have that limitation to 1005 VLANs. In fact, a transparent mode switch can support VLANs 1 through 4095. So there's a big difference there. You get a little bit more room to work with in terms of numbering your VLANs when you have a transparent switch. Okay, so those are the three different types of VTP modes. Okay, let's take a look at the different types of VTP messages, and there are only three. The first one is a summary advertisement, and this message really doesn't have a lot of information in it. In fact, it really is a summary, and the summary pertains to information about the management domain itself. So the summary advertisement has a revision number in it and the domain name, but it does not have any detailed VLAN configuration information. Okay, earlier we mentioned that the periodic VTP messages that are sent out, well those are actually summary advertisements and they're sent every five minutes. Okay, so that's the first type of message, just a summary. The second type of message is called a subset advertisement. Now subset advertisements actually follow a summary advertisement and they include the details of the VLAN configuration changes. So for instance, if server A sent out a summary advertisement and there were actually configuration changes to be made, you would see following subset advertisements coming after the summary advertisement and inside those subsets you would find the detailed VLAN configuration information. Okay, there could be one or there could be many depending on how much information is being sent, how big the changes were. So that's the second type of message. The third type of message is an advertisement request. And this is simply when one switch requests to receive VTP advertisements from another switch. So switch E may send an advertisement request to switch B saying, could you please start sending me VTP messages? That's basically all it really does. Okay, so those are the three types of VTP messages that you'll see being exchanged between different servers in a VTP domain. 
Okay, so hang in there because we're almost done with VTP. Now here, let's quickly go over the different versions of VTP, and there are three of them. However, lucky for us, there's really only one great point to mention, and that has to deal with how a transparent mode switch behaves on a network when running VTP. Now in version 1 of VTP, if a transparent mode switch received a VTP message, it would first check the domain and the password to see if it were the same as what it had. If it did not match, that transparent mode switch would not relay that VTP message. So that could mean that if you're running multiple VTP domains, only one domain would benefit from that transparent mode switch relaying those VTP messages. All of the other domains would have their messages blocked. Now in version 2, they changed that and simply stated, they said, uh, a transparent mode switch is going to forward the VTP messages regardless of the domain and password. So it didn't even bother checking those. So that means it, it, it opened up some possibilities if you're running multiple VTP domains. Okay, so that's the major point to keep in mind when you're thinking about the different versions. Okay, and this, I swear, is our very last topic on VTP. And this is VTP pruning. This is essentially a feature that is designed to preserve bandwidth on a network. And it does this by only sending frames when it has to. It's kind of smart in that sense. So let's take a look at how it works. Let's say switch C has a client and it's in VLAN 5. And that particular client sends out a broadcast message. Well, as you know about broadcasts, they are sent out to everybody in the VLAN. However, let's say switch D did not have any clients in VLAN 5. It was configured on the switch, but you don't actually have a client on an access port actively using VLAN 5. So with VTP pruning enabled, when switch B gets that broadcast, it's going to be smart enough to know that switch D does not have any clients that need to get that broadcast message and it won't send the message. It'll send it over to E, assuming it does have an active client in VLAN 5, but not to switch D. And that's really important because we're not now sending traffic over this link only to be discarded when it gets to this switch anyway. It's a smart feature. Now, VTP pruning is disabled by default, so if you want to use it, you have to enable it, and it's, in, it's supported in versions 1 and 2 of uh, VTP, and if you enable it, you need to enable it for the entire management domain. You just can't choose one or two switches. To really get the benefit, all of the switches need to be running VTP pruning. Okay, so it's a nice feature to add if you're going to uh, run VTP. It'll save some bandwidth on your network. All right, well, we've made it to the end of the VTP tutorial, so let's summarize what we covered. We now know that VTP is a Cisco proprietary protocol, and its main purpose is to enable us to easily manage many VLANs across many switches on our network. We know there are three different modes that a switch can run in, server, client, and transparent, when running VTP. And VTP uses layer two messages that have revision numbers in them in order to designate the most current information about a VLAN configuration. And here are the three different types of advertisements we talked about, the L2 messages. And then finally, we talked about the concept, the feature of VTP pruning, where VTP is intelligent and it only sends frames on VLANs when it has to to a particular switch. And our benefit there is we save bandwidth. Okay, so that's it. After viewing this tutorial and you're comfortable, be sure to check out the VTP configuration tutorial. Okay, thanks for watching.